Beautiful. So only only say what <laughs> what you feel is acceptable. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the heads up. Um, hold on, I have to enter a URL and do some other weird stuff. So one second. <laughs> Yeah, D uh, Diane, do you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm sorry. Th there were also there are about three other emails I got too. I should have sent them to you for correspondence, but I'll just I'll I'll read them. Um, I guess. Okay, you can send them to me later, just for the file. Okay. All right. No sweats. Are we live? Yep, I am um, It looks like it's working. And the right. it shows recording and live. Yeah, okay. So I didn't enter the URL, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> That's not so important. Anybody can join the meeting anyway through you know our our agenda. So go ahead, Jeffrey. All right. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, we're going to begin our June 3rd meeting of the Brookfield Conservation Commission. Uh, it's been uh, three months since we actually had a, our last meeting. The last two have been, um, we canceled the last two, but we have a lot on our agenda this evening. I um, hope everyone's doing well. And uh, I was actually originally hoping we could have this meeting in person, but uh, maybe July, July 1st. Um, so first up on the agenda is uh, the uh, minutes from the previous meeting, which was March 4th. I know Diane had sent those out. Um, did anyone have any uh, changes or corrections on those March 4th minutes? No changes. I make a motion to accept them. Second. I second the motion. So Marge, you didn't see anything in there that was? Not this time. I know, I was waiting for March. <laughs> I read it carefully. All right, so um, motion has been made to accept the minutes from the March 4th meeting. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, motion carries. Next up, we have our um, guest and public comment. No guests that I can see. Okay. <laughs> Correspondence. Letter from the Conservation Commission to Municipal Building Committee. Um, thank you to um, Julie and Alice for putting this together. And uh, did everyone, was everyone able to see a copy of that letter before it went out? Not before, no. But you did see the, the letter, though? I did, yeah. yes. Okay. I did also. Okay. Um, so I don't know what their what their meeting schedule is like, um, but we haven't. I haven't heard anything from them. I don't know if anyone else has. Uh, this is municipal uh, building committee. I think they yeah, had. I believe they're, sorry. sorry, I believe they answered the third Tuesday of the month. Right. They had a re yeah. meeting recently, but did it get canceled? I would imagine it would have. I don't know. Maybe they met in, via Zoom. I don't know. But anyway, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter because the letter really didn't go out until last week. So right, right, hopefully right. hopefully going forward, we get notified um, of anything that's pertaining to Erickson, correct? Let's hope yeah. so. They don't have to, though, right, Alice? Um, they don't have to, no, but... Now that you've sent the letter, they're aware they should. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, the next is a letter from D. Schilling, May 26th. Oh, I, don't ha I don't have that. Can you that, got it? that was the one about the mowing? Yeah. Happy landings. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you want me to read? Oh, I'm sorry. You want me to read it or hi Sue? Yeah, please, Alice, if you could. Sorry. Okay. Um, so Donna Schilling says, give me one second here. Do we know who is she a resident or is she a member of yes. 
the she, club, um, is there she's, she a member of some Autobahn or something? No, but she sent us several letters before. She's very big on taking pictures and okay. um, butterflies. She she's very into the monarch. The enclosed yeah. was recently taken. Oh, she had a picture from the old Ridgefield Facebook site, and I was pleased to be able to share it with you. Bobolinks are back at Happy Landings. I urge every one of you to take a walk. My understanding the spring at Happy Landings was unable to be completed recently and that it would not be scheduled again until this fall. I realize that when it comes to the maintenance of the property, you have quite a difficult task. I would like add input to your decision making. I'm reading this verbatim. Um, you had past problems when contracting with a farmer to mow and bathe the hail that grass became infested with invasive weeds and the hay was not acceptable. Last year, for whatever reason, it was determined that the field would be cut in mid-August, destroying hundreds of monarch eggs, caterpillars, and butterflies. The peripheral brush was decimated, as was a line of bushes between the two ponds. It was sad to see and so unnecessary. I would like it, I, I would think it would be very costly to spray to the degree that any farmer would be willing to contract to hay and bale, and it would take time and perhaps multiple applications. We have a town maintenance crew that mows the paths. And last year we were able to take the time to cut down and back and back hay and brush. Could they just drop the hay as they did last year once in mid fall after pollinating wildflowers are passed and the monarchs for the most part take in flight? I trust you are working diligently to develop a plan that will keep this lovely property open to be shared by our townspeople and the incredible flower and fauna that call the place home. Sincerely, Donna Schilling. Um, she does have a little history of the Bob Link, if you would like to read it later. Okay. Oh, I yes, saw one Bob Link when Jeff and I went for a walk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was, but that was what, first week of May? So, and this is from what, May 26th, this letter. So I'm sure they're... There's more there now. They're out there in full force. Um, all right. What about a letter from R. Garavel? Um, some of it's a little hard to read. Um, okay. He wrote it yeah. by, by hand. But basically, let's see. Let me get to that one. He says, Dear Conservation Commission, it was May 19th. Erickson Park is now in fullest of spring. The grasses grow. It's hard to read. <laughs> grow taller and now wave in the breeze of May. I sighted the first butterfly of the season, a swallowtail wadding something, oh, waltzing in the air, which is now sweetened with the surrounding foliage. Buttercups dot the fields brilliantly conveying the yellowness of the sun. It's a blessing to be here. I hope you are all well in these trying days. I thank you for your service to the community. I once again urge imploringly that these fields not be mowed not be mowed no earlier than mid-October. Last year's early mowing in August was tragic to the pollinators, the finches. I nature loafus. I nature loves, I don't know. Um, anyway, although I fully understand the need to mow these fields for maintenance, mowing in mid-October would be in the very best interest of the overall ecology of this area as, as I at this time cannot attend your meeting I'm requesting your answer in writing regarding this matter. Very truly, Robert Garavel, Carpe Diem. Carpe Diem, wow. <laughs> All right. Quote from Thoreau as well, nature is full of divinity and genius. <clears throat> and that's it. Very nice. Okay. Um, I have, um, some correspondence. I have an email from, um, this was dated, uh, May 31st. This is from Summer Hoogenboom. Oh, is this is it, who is that? Summer Hoogenboom. What do I know that name from? Sarah? We've heard that name it's, before. It's David's sister. They live the end of, um, what is it? Apache or right near the Burr Farm open space. Was he or whatever it's? pronounced sorry she emailed, emailed us Wait. two years ago too okay or maybe her son did i think 
Yeah, I mean, her the brother. family lives down there. Yeah. yeah. Dunestain? I don't know how to pronounce that street, but down there somewhere. Yeah. I think she went to school with my daughter. With Rosie huh. and Marielle? Uh, I, I think so, yeah. That's where I know the name from. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Thank so you. So she, she wrote me this message via, you know, contacted me through the website. Um, you know, she goes, she has a paragraph here about her background in, um, in wildlife management and, bi and biology. And then, um, then she, she brings it to, uh, I am interested in teaching a wildlife course with the Brookfield Nature Center in which I would teach attendees three main subjects. How to identify tracks, footprints, and signs of local animals how to use remote camera technology to monitor and learn about wildlife, how to coexist with wildlife to best preserve our wild spaces. This would be an outdoor-based program utilizing the Brookfield Nature Center space and would feature different experiences. I would begin by teaching this as a free course on a volunteer basis to see what kind of support and turnout is possible. I think such a course would be a great resource for our community. Um, she is talking about the pandemic. She would do this safely. If done safely, this outdoor-based program could be a great reprieve for those who spent an abundance of time in their homes. I would love to hear your thoughts on the idea. So she wants to, to teach a course or teach a class um, at Brookfield Nature Center. Um, Does she give an idea of how many attendees she would have? I don't know. Because the parking there is pretty limited if we were to do it, or if she were to do it. Um, there my are, is, there's some liability issues, too. I would think that if it might be better, perhaps, to go through Parks and Rec. I mean, we could work with Parks and Rec. Would there be an alternate site that uh, she could use? Did she just mention Brookfield Nature Center? I think she's looking for us to sponsor or to, to kind of vet the uh, event for her, you know. Or promote it for her. They I don't had, know. They have had similar pro projects through Parks and Rec at Williams Park. I mean, there's no reason they can't do it at the Nature Center, but to set up having children come through a class, we've never really, um, we don't have everything in place for that, but I think Parks and Rec might. I don't know if, if she's really talking about children either. I just think to open oh. to the public kind of thing. Yeah, I didn't get that impression. I, I was thinking oh, I'm maybe sorry. more an adult class. Oh, okay. Um, doesn't, were... doesn't any, does, does anybody think that maybe Stephanie should have input on this because she is so involved in the nature center? I would hate to have her think that something was, you know, going on there that, you know, she wasn't part of. I bet she well, would love to be part of it. Yeah, she's going to be, she's got a whole plan for the, um, that I'm going to discuss when we get to the Nature Center about um, the pollinator garden, and they're going to be planting that. So we'll have to be careful if people go out there to She didn't give that. you any other detail, Jeff, about what she would, how she would do it? Um, not really, just, you know, I mean, maybe I could touch base with her and, and, get more information um it sounds like she's looking for just some feedback as to the idea in general yes hmm. yeah it sounds like a great idea if she wanted to do it i would think i'm sorry i'm not on the commission <laughs> <laughs> i think it sounds like a great idea but whether or not we do it or park and rec does it but she's looking for advertising right I don't know. I, or for us to, because it, because it would be on one of our spaces that she would have our permission to do so. And maybe, I don't know. I'll get more information from her. It's just a matter of having our permission. Would we be okay with it? I don't know. Well, I mean, I, we would just need more information on that, I think, because of what, um, you know, when this would be, if we're even allowed to do this in terms of uh, outdoor gatherings, that kind of thing, you know? Mm -hmm. So. You hate to squash it because it sounds like it's a great idea and people would probably love it. And yeah, it's a plus, but I get why we wouldn't want to.
do it and send it to Park and Rec. I think that's a good idea, Park and Rec. Okay. Personally. I am going to, for the next one, I'm going to try to share my screen. If that works. Um, do you guys see my screen? Yes. Yes, yes I do. It looks like Scotland. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the problem is I lost everything else. Okay, so this this um, next one is from this guy, this guy named Alan Peck, who writes. Um, can you see what? Can you see what he wrote? Can you read that? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Should I make it bigger? Um, there we go. Frequent runner. He's talking about the the lower field. He sent me a picture too, which I'll get. What is his name? Alan Peck. Alan. Alan Peck. Yeah. One at frequent one Alan Peck. Oh, he, so he's saying I'm a frequent runner and dog walker in Gursky Open Space. Um. And would like to request that the field adjacent to the forge, barn, and cemetery to the north have the perimeter mowed, <laughs> as all of the other fields do. During the summer months, this field becomes incredibly overgrown. I have attached a photo, which I'll bring up in a second here. Uh, I'm sorry. Now I can't find it. Um, yeah, this is it. Or we got caught between a rock and a hard place. This, no, th this is this is his this is his run. That's what that's what all the red is. But he's talking about this uh, lower right field here. Mm -hmm. It looks like he's running through the woods on the trail. <laughs> yeah, I think he's just doing the perimeter there. But oh, okay. he's he's requesting that lower field, the perimeter, be mowed. The ho just the perimeter, not the whole thing. Yeah, like the other fields are, yeah. But the road's kind of the one perimeter, isn't it? It is. So he's just talking about he wants the right side so he can do his running loop. Yes. Near the forge. Yeah, I'm guessing I'm guessing yeah, this from the parking there around the edge. Yeah. Yeah, I mean I never go back that way just because of the tall grass and stuff. But if it um, was good, I would. I think that the. I think it would be a tough field to mow because it's it's very. Um, it's got a slant, big, right? And it's also, woody. there's there's that um, root cellar that's over there that I don't know if we want people going into on a regular basis. Oh yeah. I. Uh, Could we? put the perimeter in more around that area or gee maybe he just runs a different way maybe maybe that's it maybe. You know? <laughs> i think the, i think the other part of it is to um right there i don't know why the um the, the garden's not showing up on this but that's right a, that's an old picture the garden's down at the bottom it looks like where it used to be that's yeah. Cool. yeah, good call. This is where the kiosk is and the parking. So I think, you know, people, I don't know if they necessarily consider this lower field part of the walking trail, you know. Can we just say because of the river and a root cellar that's down there, we don't want to make it an attractive nuisance and we're not going to mow over there? Sure. Okay. We'll get back to him on that. Yeah, I think if it was, you know, if 20 people insisted, then that would be a little different. Okay. There was another one I received that was, um, uh, and, and now I can't find it, so I'll, I'll just stop sharing the screen. But um, it was about how um, someone wanted to put uh, birdhouses around the perimeter of the fields at Gursky. 
And uh, I asked for more information on that, and I didn't get it back. So Did they already have bluebird houses up there. Yeah, I, I think he was looking to put up. Wasn't he looking to put up owl houses or owl houses? Right, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Right. Yeah, and we did have we did have a Boy Scout put some up once, and then they fell over because they re weren't maintained, and they're very tall. There are owls back there. There's quite a few, apparently. I mean, they're everywhere, but. Yeah, so th that, that'll be on hold for now because, like I said, I asked for more information and I didn't get anything back from that person. So, um, And the last one is the last correspondence that I got. I thought was a very nice email that I wanted to share with, uh, with everybody again, if I can. Um, this was... Um, this is from Keith Wolf. Oh, I remember him. Yep. <laughs> Very nice, though, and I thought it was a good way to uh... – it says, I want to thank you and the other members of the commission for the quality and quantity of our open space. I've lived in town for over 30 years and have always been active in using these wonderful resources. While I've always appreciated my experiences, there was never that aha moment where I would realize how fortunate I am in having such a wonderful array of options. Now was that time. Now more than ever, these areas are a welcome antidote to being homebound. You can't be free, safe, beautiful, and well maintained. Keith Wolf, very nice of him. Oh, that's very nice. nice. Oh, okay. so I responded to him thanking him for for his recognition for us. So, all right, and that's the correspondence I have there, Diane. Okay. You can just send those to me, you you know, forward to me, and I'll make sure I have all the correct info. Sure. Thank you. All right. Any other correspondence? All right. Let's move on to Treasurer's report. Um, well, Stephanie is not here, and um, it looks like the Board of Selectmen, so, no, finance, <laughs> approved the budget <laughs> and it looks as though I haven't looked through this at all on my first glance um, it looks as though conservation has a budget of 20,963 so it's down it's only down $300 so that still gives us money to do another spring if we need to and plenty of other work I don't have the current numbers for this this year Okay. All right. Anything else for Treasurer's report? Well, that's not so bad because some of the earlier budget proposed budget numbers I saw really took a whack at our budget. But they didn't yet. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, you brought silence upon us. <laughs> yeah, when I saw I saw a budget a couple of weeks ago, and when I saw the the conservation line, I was thinking, "Oh my God, we're going to cut a lot." But this sounds like it's not so bad. All right, and that begins what July first, Alice? Yeah. Okay. All right, so um, old business. This would be um, uh, 6A, Happy Landings, the Napweed Spring. Um, and I think, Alice, you, you probably have the best report on that. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, we were hoping that they could spray, but the ground was still too wet. He got stuck twice, and then Public Works got stuck. Oh, God. And um, they dragged him out. <clears throat> and um, he was able to spray the front five to 10 acres, I guess, with a hose um, and put it down there. But, and so they charged us $950 instead of the 4,900, even though oh. they had the tanker all filled with, you know, the materials. Um, and he said he'd be happy to try again in the fall if we wanted to do that. All right. Yeah, we, we were, I mean, we were trying throughout the whole month of April to get them out there. Um, 
And it was just too wet this spring. Too wet, and we were trying to beat the the nesting of the bobolinks for the for, in May. So. so, what does that do with the napweed issue now? Um, we'll kind of have to see what happens if napweed starts cropping up. But I would guess we we should spray it in the fall if we can. But that would mean cutting it so it grows back, which means everybody will be very angry again. Cutting it when? Uh, sometime. It has to, what, uh, you have to cut the field and let it grow back about three to four weeks so you can spray it while it's still growing. If it dies off because it's too cold, it doesn't do anything. Mm. Yeah, so that's not going to happen. Mm. It's going to be, yeah, it's a really small window pane of time, too. Now, doesn't that delay the entire process by another year? Yeah, yeah if we can't do it in the fall, it would. I. I don't know how bad the napweed still is out there. I haven't gone out and evaluated it. Maybe okay. somebody could. Yeah, I mean, that, that was part of the plan this year was to really have someone go out and take a look at it and, and really verify, someone from the Audubon Society, really verify what the whole nesting population is like out there. But then, you know, this whole thing hit. Um, and because uh, I, I had someone from uh, the Southbury Audubon Society bent at the river coming out and then they uh, they couldn't because of this. So that was another thing that was on hold. And the same thing with the survey, which we had at that. Uh, what was it? The March meeting. But, um, you know, that could still go out there, obviously. But the public survey about happy landings. Oh, yeah. and it's still too wet right now for them to spray. The the bobo links are out there now. They can't. I don't think can I they. See. I see. Yeah. So it's a small window of time. That's the problem. Okay. All right. So anything else on happy landings? So if if we cut in the fall after the monarchs are done you would have to wait for it to grow and it's too cold to grow in October. It won't come back again. Right. If you cut it. To say, um, you know, if it takes three or four weeks for it to come back up again, to have enough leaves for the spray to sit on and kill the, kill the roots. Um, and then again, well, I mean, we could maybe, what if it's extremely warm fall in October, you cut, and if it comes back, could we spray then? Would that do anything? Yeah, I think it, that would work if, yeah, so if it just, stayed nice and warm yeah. through probably into November, because that's, if they want us to wait till mid-October, then we have to get, make sure Public Works is available to do the mow, the brush hogging. Mm hmm um, and then hope it doesn't rain. Right. Or get too soggy. <laughs> A lot of hoping, but who knows? Uh, it, it might be possible. We'll keep an eye on it. Okay. All right. Um, 6B giving garden update. Yeah, that would be me. And unfortunately, I have not been down um, to the property since. Uh, you know, before May, and I have not been in contact with them either, so I cannot confirm that they their planting went off without a hitch. If anyone else has any info, please speak up. I think people are planting in there. As uh, evidenced by, I think there was a dog that was there by one of the workers that there was an incident. Yeah, we have that down there on uh, on 6F. We'll get to that. Yeah, but I think that one of the planters was there when that happened. So I oh, think okay. Okay. they're planting, yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, Tony. That's, that's fine. Um, 6C, the Nature Center. The first thing is the installation of beehives. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> I brought it up at the last meeting saying if the committee, um, Stephanie and I had had a couple of conversations that 
She would love to see bees there. I would love to see bees there. Maybe we could do something with the public with bees. It's good for the um, flower garden, but it would involve an electric fence. So we just kind of put it on pause. I mean, a beehive and electric fence, you're looking at about $500 in costs because I don't own an electric fence and I don't have an extra beehive and bees cost money. I do have a hive that I'd be happy to put there, um, but I don't have an electric fence. So the, ele the, the electric fence is to repel what? Bears. Bears. Okay. And it might not be a bad idea to wait to see how the the garden that gets installed, where where exactly it's going to be. And then yeah. maybe the year after, next year, we could look at we'll the, where the bees would best. Yeah, it's best. a little late now to start a hive anyway, so. Yeah, and also you'd have to get the electric, I imagine, underground to the electric fence. Um, Is it no, I, there's a solar oh, thing okay. that sits on a post that it oh. plugs into. Oh, good. Okay. That makes it easier. So we'll talk about that next year. Okay. Okay. And I have a report from Stephanie about a number of the next issues. Um, she said she would like to upgrade the bathroom in that house, um, basically replace the bathroom. It's from the 1930s and it looks like it's from the 1930s and functions. I guess from the 1930s. So <laughs> um, she's going to get some estimates and let us know what the cost will be. Um, she's picking up the plans for the pollinator garden, or we'll get them, you know, um, online. And she's going to give them to all of us so we can review them. There's going to be a path through it, but she didn't really want a bunch of benches and all that. It's all going to pretty much be, you know, flowers, things that like pollinators like to pollinate. Um, and this would be phase two. As far as money, she's pretty sure there's money left from phase one and the money that you guys allocated for that to do the plantings. Um, if not, yeah, maybe- She's gonna plant, right, Alice? Pardon? The company, she's having somebody plant it, right? Yeah, Shakespeare's garden will do it. Right. And. Um, so if, if there's any need to okay additional funds, as long as it doesn't go over $5,000, um, <coughs> I'll reach out to all of you. And then eventually the third phase is maintenance and Shakespeare's would be doing that as well, but it would basically just be weeding, but it really needs to be done when it needs to be done. And all of us are fairly busy. So it probably would be worth getting that done as well. And she's going to give us an idea of the cost of that. And that is what she has. Okay. Any other comments on the nature center? All right. That'll take us to 6D Nabby Road rental property update. Oh, wait a second. I'm sorry. Did um, We had something on there about the benches that were rotting at the nature center. Yes, restoring stone wall and bench repairs. Are we going to do that or no? Did did Stephanie talk about that? Um, she did not. I don't know if she neglected to or do you want to reach out to her, Julie, and see? Absolutely. Okay. Because there's the like three really old benches that are all splintery. They're there, but nobody can sit in them. So it would be nice, not in the pollinator garden, but... right throughout the whole path. Yeah, GE um, had volunteers and they helped us put those together and put them in okay. one, yeah, I'll maybe call, 20 years I'll ago. Call her. Okay. All right, so so 6D Nabby Road rental property update. Yeah, so at the last meeting, we had approved uh, money to replace the range in the kitchen there. And Alice uh, made arrangements for that to happen. So thank you, Alice. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next thing on the list that we had talked about, uh, two other things. There was uh, the driveway could have used uh, a load of, of gravel to fill in uh, some erosion. 
and we were someone was going to uh, see if public works could uh, could take care of that. And I forget who maybe had that action. Probably me, and I did. And I just reminded them this past week about that. Okay. And they said, oh, yeah, sorry, we forgot. So they're going to go over and at least fill in that hole in the front. Okay, um, good. And they'll take a look at it. You know, if, if they have the time, I'm sure they'll do more. But once once they do that initial work, we'll see what more we would like them to do when they have an opportunity. And then the other the other item was the condition of the of the front porch and the, the concrete falling. And I was supposed to get in touch with Pete McPadden to have him take a look and give us an estimate. But uh, with the Corona virus uh, and all that, I, I haven't done that. But now that the state is is opening up a little bit more, I think uh, it might be a if with the concurrence of the board, it might be appropriate to maybe ask Pete to go ahead and, and give a look at that. Actually, he was working at my neighbors across the street a week ago. So I know that he's doing work, if that helps. <laughs> okay, yeah, and I didn't know how Pete Robb would feel, you know, about having people come to the house during the height of the pandemic. But, but now that things seem to be uh, getting a little bit rela more relaxed, uh, uh, I'll, I'll talk to Pete and uh, both Pete's, <laughs> Peter Robb and, and Peter McPadden, and, and see if uh, we can work out some something on that. Um, one other thing that came up, and I, I think I just mentioned it or emailed Jeffrey and Tony about Peter Robb wanted to get two kittens, and they both felt that was okay, but I worked a deal with him that he would have to move two of his vehicles into the back <laughs> on the front yard and he did say he's getting rid of one the other one he tried to sell but that fell through so he's still trying so he's aware that there are too many vehicles so he's hopefully going to be working on that mm. that's got to be one of the boys talk to him about repairing that the front porch I'll, uh, I'll i'll gently remind him again Okay. All right. Thank you, Tony. Uh, and, and Pete would be outside anyway for that work, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Not like he's coming in the house. Right? Yeah, so it should be okay with it. All right. All right. Next thing, volunteer Burr Farm, volunteer work and other projects. Um, so, Marge, it, um, I'll, I'll start us off on this if you don't mind. I, um, a, uh, a volunteer reached out to me. Um, about doing volunteer work at uh, Burr Farm, and this was, his was what is his name? His name is Jeffrey Neary. How do you and N e a r y, and he's very um very enthusiastic about it, and um, he wanted to clear a down tree that was on the um, the east parcel or the blue trail, which is off to the side of Burr. Um, and I could actually, I could pull up the map if you want as well. Um, and he went out there and, and I had him sign a, a hold harmless. Um, and I didn't think he was going to go out there as quick as he did. I didn't, I didn't have time to talk to Marge about it. I did talk to Marge about it um, uh, last week, I think it was, right, Marge? Um, and he went and cleared two other trees. He asked me first and, and went, out, went out and cleared two other down trees that were, that were there. He's just cutting... Uh, about three foot wide um, cutouts of the down trees so they don't block the trail. And he's also very aware of uh, dirt bikes being back there. So he didn't want to make it too wide um, for dirt bikes to get through. So I can bring up some of those pictures now. Um, and now he also has a friend named, uh, named Paul Cumberton that also wants to do volunteer work with him. Why is he? Why is he all about Burr Road, Burr Farm? I don't know, um, but um, I am sure that if there's other projects of that sort that we um, think that these guys can do, um, they have their hold harmless um, forms. Um, you know, we could. I'm, I'm sure we could see if they want to do any other work. How old are they, Jeff? I have no idea. Oh. So I'm going to share. 
I'm going to jump in. Yeah, I'm going to uh, yeah, go ahead Marge. I'm going to share some pictures while you do that. Um and I know you can't see them but of what they I did. Can't see them. Yeah. So I don't know where the, where it is. I did go over after I talked with you and walked on the old Lake George Road from one end to the other where the boat property is and yep. I could not see uh where he had been. Um uh, but I because this is a very special thing to me, and I I know you probably all think I'm a real pain about it, um, but uh, it's the whole family is it's very special this property to us, and um, I wish I could meet this man. I wish you could let him work through me what he's doing in the property, uh, and I didn't I really didn't appreciate having it of a surprise of did you know there was a man with a chainsaw out there. It really it hurt me, and I really would like, I mean, I'm certainly capable of working with somebody. You know, I could meet this man and talk to him, and, you know, um be wonderful. He worked on the back trail, on the Blue, Blue Blaze Trail, and perhaps re-Blue Blazed it, because I'm sure at this point it, it's been a lot of years. Uh, but I would be very willing to talk with him, to, you know, go through the map and, you know, uh, really? Yeah, he um he after he did those three clearings, I haven't heard from him since. But the next time that there is something, I will uh I'll have you. So I'm showing some more pictures of what he did. It's it's he's not taking down. He's just clearing small uh, openings in tr in down trees. There's trees that and are I would, across the path, and he put what it looks like one foot so somebody could walk through without having to step over the trees. Yeah, but but not big enough to get, like, a vehicle through there, no you know? Way. No, it's just a walking. There's enough so somebody could walk through. Yeah. I would be willing to reach out to him if, you know, I wouldn't mind calling him and reaching out to him and saying, hey, we would love to have you do, but let's meet, um, you know. So, so are there other are there other specific things in mind that you uh, that you would want uh, a volunteer to do out there, Marge? Well, I'm thinking of the of the blue trail. I have the the book when uh, Jason, uh, what was his name? Jason, he got his, his eagle badge for the trail in the back, Smith? and he has all all these Smith, Smith? Jason yeah, Smith. Smith. Yes. And, uh, in fact, I saw his mother recently at, at Shakespeare's, mm -hmm. and he's, of course, married with a family now. But, I, yeah. you know, I would just, it, it, you know, I would sit and talk with him with a map and, and, you know, tell him exactly where to go to do, to work on this trail. It's just, you know, you, you have to realize, I mean, like there was one other person that one day his uh, wife said, I'm going to have my husband go back there and cut through that that tree in the back. I mean, so you get this kind of thing that's unorganized, and they think they can just do whatever they want. They just, you know. And um, anyway, I would really be very happy to talk to him because I, I know the back trail needs work, um, and I don't know if you have heard any more from, what was that man's name last year that was? Zoltan? No, no. The man who was complaining about the trail in the back. Oh, worst. Worst, yes. Even worst, yeah. Even worst, yes. I have not heard anything uh, from him. So, and, and remember, don't forget, Julie went out there too with uh, her husband and cleared some down trees as well. Right, but I didn't tell Marge that I was go that we were going. So, if I, I had apologized to her for that. So I think she just wants to be, maybe if he calls back or if, are we going to just tell Marge to call him and. Yeah, I'll, I'll set up a meeting between, uh, between everybody. Um, and talk, and talk about what needs to be done or what could be done. Very good. Okay. Very good. All right. Anything else for uh Burr farm, Marge? Jason is out cutting hay. Okay. So he uh, he's probably putting hay in over at Erickson Barn any old time. 
Yeah. No, there's no it's it's been very busy. There's been a lot of walkers, a lot of because of you know what's happened in the world and um And the greenway is not open. <laughs> it's not when? it's not open when? yet. <laughs> when will soon, they open very it? Very soon. Well they have to wait they have to weigh the possibility. You know, people are looking for trails like that and you get people coming from a lot of different cities and states and yep. Uh, the you know we don't want to be the first one to open the one trail that everybody wants to go to i think you know that's a huge we want to... congregation possibility yeah. there that's dangerous yeah so i'm sure it'll be soon but you know in due time my husband said he saw people the other day parking down by where the old hearth was and walking across and going up the trail so i'm sure that must happen too probably yeah and did they say when they do open, no bikes and no dogs, right? Sounds bikes. like that's what they'll start with, yeah. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so next yeah, next up is uh, Erickson Farm. Um, and uh, the, the Municipal Building Committee plans. Now, Julie, I think you had an update on this, right? Um. Of what you heard um, about the pl the the most recent plans. Um, yeah, there. I've just heard um, from what other people have seen. I haven't looked at the plans myself, but it looks like they put. And correct me if I'm wrong. For anybody who knows, um, the emergency access is on one of the other roads behind the school not through Erickson Farm. Right, there's nothing touching Erickson right now, nothing right. at all. Right. Um, I had heard another story that um, Mr. Rob received a letter from the town um, about a meeting, some kind of a um, zoning meeting. And I said, all I know is that abutting neighbors often receive letters when there's a meeting there, where there might be a result that might affect his property, but he's not the owner, so I don't know why he would have gotten a letter. Yeah, it usually goes to us, and there's also um, a water line that might be going in, and some of those meetings may. <laughs> that goes right those by meetings, my house. Those you want go. fresh water? Yeah. <laughs> sure, please. That's the little things in life. <laughs> so it could be that too. I don't know. Okay. All right, the next one is a, um, I think we all got an email on this. I'll share it. This was the letter from um, Jason Sivo about Burr Farm. About um, Burr? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Erickson. Um, saying good morning, Alice and commission members. So this is from Jason, wanted to let you know spraying is completed, was done in one day. On a different subject, we have an issue at Erickson. Last week, so this is May 18th, he wrote this. Last week, a rider was thrown from her horse on Erickson Farm property when the horse was charged by a loose dog the owner had not leashed. Fortunately, there were no lasting injuries to horse or rider. The owners of the dog were asked for name and phone number, which they gave and reported to the dog warden. Unleashed dogs on the property is a common everyday occurrence. Um... The same problem occurs at Burr Farm with regularity. We certainly don't want any more accidents between horses, riders, and dogs. Thank you, Jason. Comments? I think we should put up another sign that says you have to keep your dog leashed and maybe a sign on the road about horse crossing. That's my input. Um, I got, did anybody see the comment from the person who was thrown on Facebook? Mm -hmm. she, no. She had a post and she was there. It was a mule and she was sitting on the back of the mule while he was grazing some clover. She wasn't holding on to him. She was just sitting there and the dog kind of walked up and jumped a little bit and barked and the mule took off and the big problem wasn't necessarily the fact that the dog 
he didn't attack the mule. He spooked him, but the mule ran and jumped the fence and ran into traffic and almost got hit. So that would have been awful. Um, but I gather there's people over there frequently with horses and pulling a cart and they don't usually have a problem, but there are a lot of unleashed dogs over there. So that's well, also, all I, I, I think that, I mean, are there ever any horse trailers or is it all Jason and his friends pretty much? I think it's the horses that are leased across the street. Yeah. So is it his wishes that we represent or the rest of the town? I, I just think, you know, we can't really stop people. We can try to stop people from keeping their dogs off leash, but um, more people use it for dog walking than for horseback riding. So you may want to consider doing horses by permit or special times or just not allowing horses. They can still ride at Burr if they trailer them over there. But they yeah, have we have it here. Yeah, okay. Um, I mean, no, that, that's a good point, Alice. I mean, it's, it goes back, even the, the, the runner at Gursky, right, wants the lower field perimeter mode so he could, so he can, you know, it's easier for him to run down there. But it's like balancing a personal need with, you know, the management of the property or a personal request, I should say. Right. Is it for the good of the town or the good of a small group of people? Yeah. You know, Jason is very fortunate that that land is there and those people that rent, you know, um, Rent his stalls and ride there. He's very fortunate that he has it. And, you know, I, I think that he's the one that should bend a little bit. I mean, more than the people who live in town and walk their dogs there. Well, I mean, they should have their dogs under control. Absolutely. I think it's unreasonable to ask people not to have your dogs running around. Oh, they definitely they are. It's a known fact they're supposed to have the dog under control. But obviously that isn't always the case. Right. I don't obviously. I don't like the idea of banning horses. I mean I I Oh I don't either. When we no. first moved here, you know, she, Mrs. Eric Gert had her horses up there, right? I mean Yep. It's I think it's beautiful seeing horses there. <coughs> I, you know, you're thinking of the liability of the town. But do we want to put up another keep your dog under control sign? Do we have those posted? Can we put I, I guess that would be the best solution right now, right? Can we put yeah. something in the kiosk? Yeah, we could what also we say doing? we could also say ride horses at your own risk. Yeah, that's a good, <laughs> that's a good idea. I mean you'd think that would be obvious, but you know we're protecting ourselves when we say that. And what about the yeah. horse crossing sign? No? Isn't that kind of a town issue? Shouldn't public works? Yeah. And I don't know how they base it on it. If there's a certain number of horses crossing on a regular basis, just like if you see a, a moose crossing somewhere. Maybe we well, asked Mr. Sivo to call public works about a horse crossing sign. Yeah. We did get the turtle crossing sign on uh, <laughs> North Mountain because there was enough complaints about having to stop and move the horses across the street, uh, the uh, turtles across the street. Um, so I, I just have a question. I'm sorry, I don't know this. Is there any kind of rule in town now that in any open space you have to have your dog on a leash? Yes, there is a there is a code and there is a sign currently posted at uh, Erickson property. Curiously, the sign is on the back side of the kiosk, which is very. You really have to go out of your way to notice it. And I don't know why it was put there. Maybe on the other side. I don't know if it's a leash law. Does the town have an ordinance or something, Alice? I'm yeah, not... it may not be a law. The terminology may be code or an ordinance, but there is something in writing regarding mandatory leashes. It says you have to have them under control. I don't know that it's a leash law. Right. It says leash. And I have a photograph that I can share with you. I, I shared it with the commission um, last year when I presented that PowerPoint of my tour of the property. Okay. And we had a discussion on this and uh, about a year ago, I think. Yeah. And 
you know, we, we were talking about, you know, control being a better, <laughs> a better term because, you know, face it, if a, a, a well-behaved dog off the leash sometimes is, is more in control than, a, than a, a, a poorly behaved dog on a leash. Right. So how do we get another sign under the kiosk? We could just take the sign that's there and put it on the front side. <laughs> <laughs> Where people can see it. <laughs> okay. I can go down there in the morning on my way to work and do that. <laughs> All right. I don't know oh, what and, tools and you might I, need. For the turtle crossing sign, I just talked to Ralph. And he had his guys pick out the sign. And they're very cute. Um, so I, I'm sure just talking to Ralph, right, Alice? I would think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, I um, can do that. And there's there's a couple other things when we're finished about Erickson, if if it's time for that. Should we tell Jason anything, or should I tell him anything? I can call Ralph. Um, if nobody's okay with a horse crossing sign. Uh, so I'll tell Jason there's a going to be a horse crossing sign, and we're going to put the uh, dog leash, the dog sign, in an obvious place. Where should we tell him to put the sign? Right there where that fence is or before in front of the house or what? I don't The horse one? Yeah. Shouldn't it be near the road? The crossing? Yeah, but <laughs> it should be it should be behind it. <laughs> it should be near where the gate is where the horses cross. Okay. There's a gate at the at the far end up near our uh, Belden Hill. Yep. There's okay. a gate. Yeah, that's, that's what it okay. should be in that area. Okay. Oh, that reminds me of another thing. Um, Jeffrey, I sent it to you, I think, about the, the 12 foot gate. The gate, yes, I saw that. Yeah. And um, it needs to be replaced. I guess it broke. So the price, I looked at some prices just at tractor supply, and they run like 100 to 200. So if you wanted to allocate no more than $250. I'd see if I could get it, and Jason said he'd install it. All right, from, from, from what? Is that the walk-through gate? Yeah, the big one, the 12-foot one. Oh, okay. All right, so um, to allocate no more than $250 spent on a, a, an aluminum, 12-foot aluminum gate to replace the current one. Do you need that in the form of a motion? I'll, I'll make a yes. It's, if there's any discussion about it, I'll, I'll make a motion to allocate no more than two hundred fifty dollars for the um, for a twelve foot aluminum gate to replace the current one at Erickson Farm. I'll second I'll it. Oh, sorry, Cliff. That's okay. A Cliff <laughs> second. Any discussion? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so, uh, so Alice, do you want to take care of that with, with the aluminum gate from yeah, Tractor I'll, Supply? Yeah, I'll get one ordered. Okay. And I'll talk to Jason about maybe he can pick it up for us. Okay. Um, one other thing came up about Erickson. Um, Mr. Mangles, who is a botanist, was over there. And he would like the trail moved, the one that is currently at the north end of the property that's near towards Huckle, Huckleberry School. He wants to see if we can move the trail in about 50 to 100 feet because that's really prime turtle habitat there um, for turtles that you know are coming up out of the wetlands to lay their eggs. And I believe Jason Saivo mows that because I asked Park and Rec and they don't do that one. So I'm pretty sure it's Jason. Oh, it is Tony. Okay. I think so. I, I think I had a conversation with him about that once and I think he does do it. Okay. He so sent you an email out recently, it. didn't he? That he mowed it. It's oh. very wet back there too at the bottom. Yeah, he, well, he sprayed it. Oh, okay. That but was a fur. Oh, I thought oh, he yes, put air. Yes. It um, is very wet in the back, so maybe it's a good idea to have the trail moved. Okay. All right, I'll reach out to him about that also. 
And does anybody know why there are stakes out in in Erickson Field, wood stakes? That's what I thought was the Municipal Building Committee um, doing surveys and stuff. That's one of the reasons I was like, wait a second, <laughs> what's going on? It may have been initially from them. Yeah, I he was, Chris was asking that as well, why there are stakes there. They go back into the woods too, back there. Huh. Hmm. I don't know. And by the road as well. Yeah, I I don't know. Hmm. All right, so we have a lot more from uh, Chris coming up. If you recall, that uh, that was the December meeting, right, Alice? Where he was a guest at the December meeting. Yes. Okay. Um, if you recall, he's the botanist who found the uh, exotic plant down at the Gursky. Yes. The lower Gursky field. Okay. So, so join this meeting tonight. He wanted to join this meeting tonight. Yes. Yeah. So six G is Gursky property and uh, on the agenda, and uh, two of those items we already talked about: the request to mow the lower field and the bird box, um, which, like I said, I haven't heard anything more about. So that takes us back to the exotic plant species. Um, I think Jeffrey, just to correct, it's not exactly exotic. It's a a plant of concern. It's on the list of okay. concerned species. Okay. Exotic would mean like a, you know, a banana tree growing in the middle of Gursky. That would be <laughs> yeah. exotic. <laughs> Where is it again? I went walking there the other day with my husband and it was so beautiful that that back field and back of the house where you park on the side there and walk in the, the um, building that uh, the Boy Scout or the path that the Boy Scout built. I'm not sure where you're talking about. Um, Behind which house? To the left of the Gursky house. The front farmhouse or the rental house? The front farmhouse. Near the Park orchard? On the road there and you walk in. Oh, where the turnoff is. Is that where this plant yes. is? Yeah. Yeah. And I have asked them um, public... Well, I asked Bobby Fisher is one who usually mows and he would ask first to mow it because he gets paid by us. So I told Chris, nobody's mowing there, you know, at this point, except the trail because people need the trail mm -hmm. to avoid too many ticks. And um, he was okay with that, but he, he wanted some form of letter or recognition from you on his, um, his work and that you would respond to him in some way. I'm not sure exactly what he wants for a response. Well, Alice, can I, can I put up that, um, the, um, his response? Sure. Um, let's see if I, if I can do that. that might help us, uh, just get a better understanding of what we're talking about here. You guys could see that. Marge, I'll read it. Um, Thank you. I don't know how to get rid of this little box down here. Oh. So um, this is from Chris saying, Gursky, I understand the need for a path, and I and don't think that the root path poses a problem per se, but the mowing I noticed last year seemed to go beyond a path widthwise, initially very close to the orchid population and later on well into it. Did you ever get copies of the form and Im imagery markup I sent to the Conservation Commission, commission via Julie? He, he did send me a, uh, a picture. And okay. I think you sent it to us because I remember it when he came in and he sent it again to me, but okay. yeah. Beyond the immediate concern about mowing of that particular path section, I think this touches on the larger issues as at Huckleberry, of mowing of wetland areas, wetland boundaries, and site-specific knowledge as a basis for guiding management rather than random and after-the-fact discovery of impacts to species of concern and sensitive areas. I, I only explored a small part of Gursky. There could easily be other species and similar issues elsewhere there. While I wasn't exactly expecting a request from the town to do a full inventory, I will say the lack of follow-up since that meeting has been a disappointment. I would welcome opportunities to work with the town, 
One of the messages I tried to make at the meeting, but practic practically speaking, I've since been engaged in a boatload of other work, so it's now looking like this might not be feasible this year. In any case, this needs further discussion and perhaps some advanced planning, if that has appealed to you and the commission. I didn't know who was looking for a response from us. I wasn't aware of either. Um, it sounds like he's asking if we want him to do an inventory, to hire him to do an inventory. Well, first of all, to, to address the path, how, how, how does that path keep getting wider if there's just a path from the from the road to the woods wh where where does it get i don't understand where it's getting wider i don't remember it getting wider no i was just i was just there and it was a regular mode path like it all the other trails the same width it didn't look well, and who knows exactly what happened last year, but I did tell Chris Rebuse who mows it, you know, or has his guy mow, guys mow it, that this is an area of concern. So what happened last year, who knows, but going forward, I'm sure he'll be careful. Part of the thing is we don't know these areas, you know, Chris might know where certain um, issues concerning protected species might be, but we're not botanists. No, and then what does he want? I mean, we're still, if he finds something in the fields that aren't being mowed, we're not gonna mow it because we're just not mowing it. Well, it, he, he refers to huckleberry too, because there is a, a species of concern over at huckleberry just mm -hmm. past the stone wall between Erickson and huckleberry. And Other than the orchid? No, this is a sedge, a grass. Oh, okay. And it's going to be protected um, when they do the school, but he his concern is it's not enough. The town is not doing enough to protect these things. That he should he should be doing a study right now on that plant. Nothing should be mowed near those fields so that he can do his study. And that's what he suggested to Malone and McBroom. So he's just- He can do uh, a study, but he wants us to pay him to do a study? Is that what he's saying? I'm not sure. I, I don't know exactly what he wants and I have a little trouble um, getting answers. To All right, you know what, Alice, I'll, I will talk to him. I will get in touch with him and, and I'll talk to him. I mean, the thing about Huckleberry is we now know there are some wetlands over there. We didn't know that before. So protecting them, yes, that totally makes sense. But, you know, he's saying that we should be on top of this and wetlands should too to make sure that nothing is done. And, but these fields have been mowed forever. And the sides of the fields get mowed because parents don't want their kids with ticks on them. And that's what the town's been doing. So to change that, it's going to take a little bit of work. And perhaps we need to let him know that we're willing to do that if he could open up the lines of communication a little bit and explain exactly what he wants us to do. And then the school is going to be built, the new school, and everything will change. But I know yeah. how, how large an area these orchids are, but I'm thinking of uh, some golf courses that I've seen with endangered species of plants where they'll put stakes and signage out there, you know, basically saying keep out because. Right. Well, that's what I was hoping he would do is tell us exactly where he wanted the town not to mow, for instance, and then I, we'd make sure they didn't mow, but he can't tell me that exactly. He did that one section. That's all he's done so far. At Huckleberry? No, at Gursky. Oh, you're talking about Gursky. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's settled for now. Yeah. I think he's okay with what we're doing there. But, but he's concerned that we're not doing enough about it at Huckleberry. Or at other places that he's discovered that we're not aware of. Okay. Um, you know, he wants things at Huckleberry too. So, I mean, at Erickson. 
We're having a very big storm outside. We are. Mm, thunder and lightning. <laughs> Just started to thunder here. Sure now. So if you want to reach out to him, Jeffrey, that would be great. And I will. Um, I will. Um, the the thing is, too, the, the thing too, if you think about the timeline, yeah, he was at our December meeting. We didn't meet in January. Um, and we've had two meetings since it, and it, and it was winter. I, I didn't know like what, um, what we were supposed to do in that, the first in that time, time I met him was when Marge and I went to that meeting at we ought nog. Yep. Right. And he was there and he approached me and I invited him to come to one of our meetings. Um, thinking it, i mean he brought it to my attention that there was this plant and i was like by all means so he came to us telling us there was this plant and we did what we thought we could so i don't know what he wants I yeah know. i think if he could make it clear to us what it is he wants and i'd be happy to go out with you jeffrey and look at these spots and mark out areas to avoid if he could tell us where those areas are Sure, sure. And, and the, the other part of it, though, is uh, we'd also be going on his word um, alone at this point, which maybe which maybe we should get another opinion, too, right? He maybe is a we'll, botanist, though, Alice. You know him, right? I, I just know him from the meetings he's been at, and he came to one of ours about 15 years ago about another plant up north. <laughs> in Northern Brookfield, but couldn't tell us where it was because it was, it had to remain secretive. So there wasn't really much we could do. Um, but yeah, Jeffrey, maybe we'll um, go over this, you know. Yeah, I'll, I'll, get, I'll get in touch with him. Okay, and I'd like to talk to you too before you talk to him. Sure. Um, that will take us to Let me get let me get back my agenda here. I'm sorry. I believe I believe we're on to new business. Yes. New business, 7A Barn Quilt Trail. And that's you, Marge, right? That is me. Uh, I will table the, until we can all get together, certainly. Uh, Diane Eng has been very nice about sending me information uh, in the, the military paper, I guess, is it, Diane? About the uh, barn quilt. And I also saw um, Susan Bailey, who headed up the uh, committee in New Milford, and I saw her Shakespeare's, and she said she's very willing to come to our meeting as soon as the public is out and about. Um, so and, you know, maybe next month when if, you know, we can all get together and I could make a presentation and ask Susan Bailey to come because she's very knowledgeable on barn quotes. Mm -hmm. But we have to see what's going to happen with this COVID-19, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's where the barn quote thing is, okay? Oh, thank I you. Have, I do have a question. Um in the paper, there was a, a, a letter from a man by the name of Keith Gallagher, I believe his name was, and he wrote in, Kevin Gallagher, he wrote in about, uh, he was very unhappy about the zoning commission on a decision they made on a development. Where is that? Do you have any, any idea on it? I do. It's, um, it's 37 Old Route 7. It's... He lives at the very end of the road. He's got all that equipment down there. 37 Old? Old Route 7. So if you go to the Brookfield oh. Cleaners. Yeah. And you were, instead of continuing up Laurel Hill, you took a left instead of going right towards the Cleaners. That little dead end road that goes oh. to the highway. Okay. He lives at the very end of that, and he doesn't want a development that's going to be next door to him. Oh, see, I couldn't, you know, he doesn't state where, or it's just he goes on about being very unhappy about the zoning, and I thought, where is that all about? Yeah, so he's, the was, only, he's the only neighbor, and he doesn't want anyone there, basically. Oh, uh, okay. 
And the other thing I was wondering about was uh, Optus Rocks, the uh, property down there that was for sale. Cause I was wondering if it was that property. Um, 45 Optus Rocks, the, the one yeah. with Victoria Lang's property? Yeah, yeah. Um, that was approved as a single family home. He's going to demolish the existing home and build one new home there. Um, the wetlands turned down. He wanted to do a subdivision of four houses. And he, he withdrew because okay. um, they made it fairly clear that it probably wouldn't pass. And this, so there's no effect on the open space that is behind that property? Does integrity own a parcel of land back there? Isn't that why it all came up to our meeting? Yeah, Hagerty owns some, the Ballards own some, and then next to Hagerty's is some town-owned open space that is pretty near the Hogan Booms. <laughs> so there's no, no, uh, nothing happened with that? No. Okay. I was just wondering if this Kevin Gallagher, if that was that property, because he never states in there where it was all, you know, where it was. Well, and he says that he couldn't, wasn't allowed into meetings, but he was, and there's yeah, some other things. Yeah, yeah he's, oh. he's upset. Yep. Thank um, you. I, sure. I just found um, under Chapter 164 of the Town Ordinance, Open Space Use, it mentions dogs and other pets under 164-8 that says dogs and other pets are permitted on open space land, provided that such pets are under the control of their owners or keepers at all times. Okay, and then so the, next, the next one's riding of horses and bicycles. The riding of horses or bicycles is permitted on areas set aside for such purpose purposes. I don't know if you remember, we tried to make a list for the trail guide of what's permitted where. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So someday we might have to do that if there are more conflicts of use. I think we avoided doing that because at this point we hadn't had any conflicts. Yeah. We have quite a bit of bike riding on the birth record. Often see bi bicycles. On the yeah, we side. haven't said it's not permitted on any of them yet. Yeah, yeah. If they're not motorized, I, I guess we don't have a beef. Well, certainly the uh, Silver River Greenway, there's bikes out there. Mm -hmm. Big and little. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> All right. Anyone have anything else for the uh, for the good of the order? I think I'm good. All right. Uh, well, hope, like I know I said this last time. Uh, hopefully, we can uh, meet uh, in person for our July first meeting. Um, hopefully. Can I ask a question? Remember when we were talking about? maybe having someone come from, was it Weatnog to talk about what we could do at Erickson and our other properties to try and keep them better protected? Yes. Is that something we want to still do? We could still pursue that. The reason why um, that we canceled it was because we needed to come up with our plan first before they could give us guidance on it. That that was their Maybe direction. We talk about that next time. Absolutely. Did you know that it is now called the Northwest Connecticut Land Conservancy? It's not way out now anymore? Nope. Nope. They merged with a group in um, Naromi. Naromi, I don't know how you pronounce it, N-A-R-O-M-I. And now so they've changed their name. So did they buy more land? No, they didn't buy it, but the Romney they land land? Trust. I'm sorry? Yeah, more yeah, more land. Wow. Well yeah. the bigger the better, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Uh okay. But there's a yes, you too. Uh, um, if there's nothing else, then um, I guess we'll we'll uh, adjourn the meeting. Uh, motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. A second. <laughs> All right. Motion carries. Have a good All night, everyone. everyone. Thank good you, night. guys. All right. Hopefully, we'll see you soon. Well.